okay, I'm just going to talk to you out of my heart, New Hope. You're a great church. You're doing good. We continue to, we continue to, to do ministry. You're being faithful. You're awesome. Thank you guys so much. We're here and available. Call us anytime. And uh, thank you for encouraging us, um, checking on us. So we're doing our best to check on you. And if you would, just be so kind. Like if you haven't heard, like, give me a text. You know, let, let me hear from you. Let me know you're okay. I just can't get to all 4,000 people in that big of a rotation, you know. And so just 778-4524, just, hey, send me a text. Give me a phone call. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I know the other pastors feel the same. And, but I don't have their numbers memorized or else I'd give them to you. <laughs> so uh, joy be the joy to the Lord, right? Hey, listen, I was thinking how much uh, aware we are, uh, like putting our hands on our face. Like I'm constantly aware of that, keeping my hands washed, uh, distancing, <clears throat> just being mindful of, of being very careful and really of cleanliness and of uh, uh, keeping our you know hands pure and hands clean and all that so that we don't spread this. We don't. Uh, we don't get it ourselves, and all of that. Well, a thought, a thought came to my mind is when this is over, right now, perhaps starting now, which I think a lot of you already have. But can we be as mindful about pleasing God and staying clean spiritually, uh, clean hands, a pure heart? The Bible talks about. Can we stay as mindful that way? that you're constantly aware of, of doing what God has asked us to do and avoiding the things he says do not do. You know, one of the, one of the great lies of the church that has been propagated out of trying to get people to know how much God loves them and how powerful the amazing grace of God is has been twisted just enough that it is really a huge problem. And that lie is that everybody sins it's okay to sin. We can't help but sinning. And everybody has their pet sin, so we just do our sin and we think we're saved because of God's grace. And uh, because, it, you know, we're just human. And while there's a measure of truth that sinless perfection, like you never, you always do exactly what God wants you to do. There's that sin of omission. I never do omit. I, every time God wants, I, I say things just the way He wants me to say them. I always call the right person at the right time as God's voice. I hear it and I obey. So, I mean, sinless perfection is, is you know, that's, that's one thing. But, but living not in sin is a different thing. And we have the power of the Spirit to just save us from our sin, not in our sin. But, but to help us overcomers in Christ, he who overcomes will inherit life. The revelation to the church, it just says that over and over. And, and we, we can rise above. And so I thought of this verse in, in Hebrews as I thought <clears throat> how intentional I'm being to stay healthy by avoiding certain things, how healthy spiritually I want you to stay by staying intentional and mindful of avoiding things. Paul says, put off and put on. And it says, thou shalt not and thou shalt. And Hebrew writer talks about the person that thinks, oh, well, the blood of Jesus is there. We all thin, you know, oh, well, I'll just live with my girlfriend. I'll just do this. Or I'll do that. I'll just live this uh, adulterous lifestyle. Or I'll just, I'll just live in pornography or I'll just live in this or I'll live in that. Or I'll just be selfish with my money. I'll just be selfish with everyone else. Or I'll just be out full of anger and out of control. Or I'll just, you know, I, I've got, I, I, I believe this is, I don't care what the Old Testament says. It's just old and it's just dumb. And they, they weren't enlightened and people misunderstood. I, now I've got my ideas about this and you know, I'm just going to believe what the culture believes and I'm just going to live that way, but I'm a Christian and I'm going to go to heaven. Well, you know, I'll let God judge that. I'm not going to judge that, but I will read what the Bible says about willful sinning. It's when you know something's wrong and you enter into it and live a lifestyle. So I'm going to define willful sinning as living the lifestyle on and on. Like if you're a salesman and you lie to make sales all the time and you make lie, lie, lie to get more money, that's a willful lifestyle of lying and greed. It's not okay. It's not okay to see people to make money. Ill gain. <clears throat> so um, it's one thing if you're dating someone and you're struggling and you, ma you make a mistake. It's another thing to call wrong right, move in together and live together outside of wedlock. Here's what the scripture says. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, 
if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there's no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, when you're living in that, the blood of Christ quits flowing over you. The cleansing of His blood, the grace of Jesus stops. It doesn't mean it can't start again, but it's done. It's stopped. That's why the warning's here. <clears throat> and so it says, it says, I'm going to read it again. If we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment. You continue there, there's what you're going to face. And the fury of the fire, which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now remember, Hebrews is writing to the Jews. So they're quite aware of the law and he's bringing them to that. But he also has just talked a lot about grace through the blood of Christ in this same chapter and talking about how we are the, 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 the better, the better covenant is the covenant of the blood of Jesus so that we can be under. And that's how we're saved through faith or grace. But he goes on, he says, so he brings back the law and he says, remember that? And then he says, how much severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he has sanctified by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace. I'm going to let you struggle with that. Insulting the spirit of grace. We're saved by grace. Grace is not a definition. You don't insult a definition. You just insult the spirit, the Holy Spirit. We're born again by the power of grace that comes in and changes our thinking, changes our feeling, and helps us see the way God sees. That's a power of salvation, that grace. We insult that power that saves us when we just go, I'm just going to sin and I'm just going to let that blood cover me. I'm just going to let that grace save me. I'm just going to live in this sin. That's what he's dealing with here. He's dealing with the huge lie, at least in America. And so he goes on, he says, for we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Well, he goes on, and when you le read this whole letter to the Jews, you'll see that he's not propagating going back and being justified by the law. Not at all. What he's saying is, don't excuse sin in this passage and just willfully live in it, expecting the blood of Christ and what Jesus did for you to cover it. What kind of a grateful heart is that to take such advantage? So here's the answer so that you don't fall into judgment. Repent, have godly sorrow, get on your knees, cry out to God and change. Repentance is not just feeling sorry, but it's stopping your sin. Stop the sin, turn from it, run. Now, if, if, you, if you don't think you can do that, you're wrong. You can. Because the Bible says in 1 John, if you feel like you're doomed forever, you're not. Okay? 1 John, it says uh, 9 and 10, 1 John 1, 9 and 10, that if you, uh, if you say, well, verse before it says, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar, the truth's not in you. Uh, and, and that's for sure. It says, but then it goes on, it says, but if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So the answer is confess your sin, cry out to Jesus, turn from your sin, stop sinning, trust Jesus, He'll forgive you, He'll welcome you back, He'll bring you in. So, so church, let's live every day it's careful to stay spiritually clean as we do physically clean. Spiritually germ-free as we are the physical germs. Let's live it out, okay? We're going to get to go to heaven someday. I can't wait to be forever with you. And by the way, one more thought I had. <clears throat> Think about Corey Ten Boone who was during World War II hidden by a German family because they were coming after the Jews. Just think about her and how isolated she was for so long. Think about the people around the world that right now can never gather openly, but they're Christians. They pray. They, they don't even have a Bible. Maybe they have a little bit of a Bible. Maybe they do have a Bible, but they can't gather. Man, I'll tell you what, we have a great, great thing to be able to video this in. We get this. So let's adjust our attitudes. Let's, uh, 
Let's, let's make church our home. Let's lead there. Get on your feet. Worship God during live stream. And hopefully we're going to be back together here before long. And uh, do it may look a little different, but we're going to have some times of worship together. God bless you. Have a happy Thursday. Go church. Love you.